Well, hello out there. It's been a while since I've actually done one of these. Kind of talking about some current car events. Because, you know, even if you have an old car, you got to buy a new one to drive around. And so I want to do some catching up with Stellantis, my favorite car company. Because, you know, the entire uh, car business is a mess right now. And Stellantis seems like they're doing the worst out of everybody because of, um, oh, I don't know. Let's let, let's see what what the uh, what the CEO of Stellantis says about this. Oh, wait. Uh, <clears throat> Carlos Tavares uh, aims to correct arrogant mistakes in U.S. market. Really arrogant. That's impre- that's an impressive term to use. Arrogant. You know, they just can't admit they don't understand the North American market. So they're going to be doing massive cost cutting. uh, $9 billion across the board. And a lot is going to be coming in North America. So all you UAW workers who got that giant pay raise, your retirement is very near in the future. So uh, in correcting what uh, CEO Carlos Tavares described Thursday is an arrogant mistake by himself and the company in the automaker's U.S. operations that led to sales decline, bloated inventories, and investor concerns. Tavares said the conversion of the three factors led to the problems, not selling down vehicle inventory fast enough, manufacturing issues specifically with two unnamed plants, and lack of sophistication in the way to go to market. You know, that just sounds like you don't know what you're doing in North America. I'm not even going to read the rest of this because it's just a lot of corporate doublespeak and um, basically just belaboring the point that they're just going to fire as many people as humanly possible. So on the heel, you know, this came on the heels of this coming out. Tim uh, uh, Kuniskis is retiring. Now he's actually... I believe he's younger than Tavares. Tavares is um, 65 and still the CEO of Stellantis um, worldwide. Uh, Kuniskis was basically the champion of the Hellcat and all the high performance stuff. I mean, granted, a lot of times it's called him a carnival barker, but, you know, he did want performance cars very much so. And I think the timing of his retirement is quite suspect because he was the head of dodge and ram both brands are in massive trouble right now and i mean dodge is to the point where and we'll get to this in a little bit then the replacement car is mm, not doing so great the hornet is a disaster it's the, one of the slowest selling cars in all of north america i drove 2500 miles across the united states and i saw one one and they're not they're, not, they're very easy to spot because they're ugly and uh yeah and ram just came out with a bunch of new product that i don't know if it's going to sell because they're now just as expensive as ford pickup trucks and if you if they're going to be the same price i'll buy the ford all day long just 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 because of my experience 20 something years of owning ford trucks i did not have half the problems that my friends that buy rams do I need to have a third of the problems. So I'm I'm digressing. And now I'm going to replace him with, with two people. Uh, Chris Fuel will be the, uh, who who is now also at Chrysler is taking over Ram. So Chrysler is so little going on that they're giving executives at Chrysler other pieces of the company to take care of. And we'll get to that in a little bit. And then Matt uh, McClare will become uh, Dodge Brand CEO. Uh, he was uh, in head of sales and has brought a little experience. Good luck. This is actually kind of sad because, I mean, this is Dodge. This is, you know, this is, this was Chrysler Corporation's every man car division. I know it's known for performance, but for the most part, this was the cars that the regular family would own because Plymouths were always the taxi cabs or the very inexpensive car and Chrysler's were luxury cars. Right now, Dodge is has no direction. They're re, they're coming out with an electric appliance that's going to be extremely expensive. They have a Hornet that no one wants. They have a Durango which is aging out. 
and I they're doing, trying to do a last call on that, and God only knows what that's going to become. So Dodge itself, and they don't have a minivan. Chrysler has a minivan, and that's the only product they have at this point. And I'm, I mean, Chrysler, I'm assuming is done. I, I'm, there hasn't been any rumors, talk of anything coming out. And you'd figure you'd want to do that soon because all you have is a minivan and a Chrysler 300 supply is going to dwindle and there won't be anything left. It's kind of silly at this point to sell one vehicle. So those two, th those two divisions are not doing so hot. So we have, uh Kanuska's leaving which is bad so then the other part is Jim Morrison uh who was the leader of Jeep for a very long time and he they moved him for some reason <clears throat> into the performance parts division which I don't think he had liked very much because that was only a few that was December and now it's June and he's leaving so he's just kind of leaving and they put the head of maserati north america who are doing such a bang up job as the head of jeep in north america i'm not so sure this is such a great idea william peffrey ceo more north america has replaced morrison as the head of jeep north america this transition in a wave of significant executive changes at stellantis in recent months Several high-profile executives have left the company, including Tim Kanuskas, which we've talked about, Jason Stojevich. He was the pre uh, former president of Slantis Ca uh, Canada, and he resigned as the U.S. retail sales chief after two months in the position. That's, that, is, that is literally the, just somebody jumping off board, realizing that there's no win in their job. Because you don't go from being the president of Canada, you know, Stellantis Canada, get moved to a, a very high, a high profile job and then go, yeah, I, I just don't want this. I'm retiring. I'm, I'm just leaving. No, the, the, when there's smoke, there's fire and there's a lot of fire going on right now at Stellantis. Oh yeah. And the last is the CE, COO, chief operating officer left in uh, January. He jumped ship to go to Goodyear. Stellantis is bleeding a lot of uh, executives, and especially North American executives, and that's not very good be because they already have trouble marketing their products here. Uh, Antonio Falosa was appointed new Jeep CEO, and then he took over from Morrison then, and yeah because then christian and yeah, they had somebody else christian uh moner also had left so i mean there's been a lot of bleed going on and and why and 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 you know so what is coming out with their product because they had a giant announcement um for um their charger daytona rt scat pack super b daytona ev thing oh Dodge Charger, Charger Daytona launch delay by 90 days to fix issues. I remember in an earlier video, which I'll put up um, there somewhere, that I said that, you know, there's not a lot of testing and there weren't a lot of mules. There were no mules seen. And then all of a sudden they just roll this mule out and, woo, oh my God, you got a car. Oh, no, that's not the way it works. <clears throat> no summer launch for the new Charger will come the fall. And I will probably bet that it won't come in the fall either i i just can't i just can't this is they're gonna as we read on you'll see why dodge controversial all electric 2024 charger daytona uh, it is not a 2024 it's a 2025 you could try to call it a 2024 but 2024 has got la launched in last september they think they're not getting launched this year that's a 2025 i'm uh, i don't know why they're trying to play that they're trying to gaslight us because they have one year of no chargers just one year the 2023s which were built the last ones were now built in december which is six months ago <clears throat> according to a multiple dealer sources the cars have been pushed back 90 days sources close to the program have told us that the postponement is necessary to address several electrical issues that have surfaced during testing 
So they're just now testing these cars. So good luck if you're a sucker that buys one of these because you are a guinea pig. You're going to be the beta tester for this car, 100%. So you're going to drop 90 grand and you're going to be a beta tester. Just just let that set in for a second. And yeah, go. Uh, no, thank you. No, no, thank you. I'll buy something else. Since the beginning of the year, Dodge has been putting prototypes of the new Dodge Charger Daytona through rigorous road testing. I doubt that. However, these tests have highlighted some problems. For instance, one prototype was spotted by one of our readers being hauled back to the Chrysler Technical Center in Auburn Hills on the back of a flat bag wrecker with trough straps running through its open windows. <laughs> You serious? <laughs> they couldn't even strap it down by the wheels. <laughs> In other case, engineers were locked out of the vehicle hatch, forcing them to climb through the interior to access the cargo area. This explains the number of prototypes we've seen with cords hanging out of their hatches as the upscale models have power hatches. Dealer documents indicate that Dodge has delayed allocation orders, order processes, even the official presentation of the Dodge Charger from May 4th to August. If you honestly think that this car is going to be even available this year, this calendar year, you're, you're really pushing it. No, this three month delay will allow engineers to resolve the issues and ensure a smoother debut for the e-muscle car. With all eyes on Dodge's new, newest e-muscle car, Dodge must do everything it can to ensure a smooth rollout of the 2025 Dodge Charger Daytona. <laughs> the Charger Daytona is a crucial model for Dodge. Yes, it's because it's the only car they have. In fact, it's the only new thing they have because the Durango is ancient and the Hornet is garbage and the Challenger doesn't exist. So, yeah, this is literally the car. Um, yeah, it's great. Uh, <laughs> uh, with a significant shift from traditional gasoline powered muscle cars to electric vehicles, EVs, or as I like to call them, appliances, as such companies under considered pressure to get the launch right. This is also in the face of where every manufacturer has now scaled back everything EV. Volkswagen Group, I believe, just basically scrapped their whole idea of going EV. They just they just went, yeah, no, it's not an idea. Even General Motors is like, yeah, maybe hybrids is a good idea. And Ford has basically just cut production of the mach and the Lightnings to bare minimum. They've also canceled uh, doing a development for a battery plant. Yeah, so you keep on pushing this car that no one wants. Uh, also, buy my house, and I'll probably do a short video of this. Later, there is a uh, parking lot, and actually, I'm sorry, a field of uh, Teslas, about 300 of them that are just, they were just put out there because they can't sell them. And this is the company that people that uh, want to be virtual signaling, that's who they run to is Tesla. And they can't sell cars. So the pricing for the Dodge Charger Daytona first edition models expect to be high, reflecting the fully loaded features these cars will offer. This concerns some fans. There are no fans, especially considering the uncertainty surrounding government incentives for EVs. That will also go away. A change in administration following the upcoming November election could impact these incentives, potentially making the cars less affordable. They're not affordable to start with. Oh, I love the little strap hanging out the back. Look at that. That is embarrassing. There you go. It, so is that standard equipment on these cars? You know, you just drop 90 grand and you got to have a cord so you can get into the trunk. What happens when the door is locked and you can't open them? Oh, well. Uh, looking ahead to our 2025, our sources indicate that Dodge plans to expand the Charge Charger Daytona RTSE uh, Superbird EV lineup with a more budget-friendly rear-wheel drive GT model. These models expect to feature single electric drive, producing around 300 horsepower, utilizing the same 400-volt electro system as the RT and Scat Pack models. This should make Charger Daytona more accessible to a broader range of, you know. Okay. But those of you who would rather skip the appliance, 
The Scat Pack models will continue the Charger internal combustion legacy with a pair of high performance twin turbocharged engines from 420 to 550 horsepower. We contacted Dodge to comment on delay and issues with new Charger to Daytona. I have yet to respond. So, yeah, Mopar Insiders, who is a shill, they didn't, even, they couldn't even get a response from Stellantis on what's going on. I can't, I can't, I can't figure out, you know, uh, how much more this 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 company is going to be able to handle in North America. I mean, the only thing they have that's has any value at this point is Jeep because you can sell a Jeep anywhere, and that's literally why they bought or love the cheap price for Chrysler Corporation. Everything else was garbage to to um, to Fiat and. The Jeep brand is something you can sell in South America, Asia, Europe, Africa, Australia. You can sell a Jeep anywhere, especially where the roads are bad. And that's the only brand that's safe. But Dodge, it's not looking very good. Chrysler, I think, is pretty much dead. Uh, it's as dead as the doornail. And Ram, once again, it's safe just like Jeep. But unfortunately, you know, making products that people don't want and making them very expensive doesn't help your cause. So I'm not so sure about, you know, the former Chrysler Corporation and what's going to be left in about two years. I just can't imagine the Europeans are going to either throw the money that they want it, they need to throw into this or just basically sell off what they can or just, or just let Chrysler and Dodge die and just take a take Dodge, you know, take Ram, Ram truck and uh, Jeep since they're worldwide marketable and just use that and then had made everything in Mexico because I don't see a very big commitment to North American manufacturing, especially after that last contract. And this Tavares wanting to cost cut so badly. This is this is a really not a good thing. And then w one last point here. Uh, we did a thing on how many of these cars for last call was still out there. This is RT and up for challengers that in my area around Tampa, 454 of them still. There's actually a dealership near my home. They have five green uh, challengers that they just keep mo moving around. They just keep moving them around the dealership. They're bright green, so it's hard to hide them. And then, you know, so a 454. Of those in 222 chargers, uh, RT and above, in a 100-mile radius around Tampa. So that's still over 600 cars, and each one of these is over six months old. Just let that set in. They, they, they were la The last ones were made in December. These are over six months old. Lot rot is going to be setting in. So the chargers, I guess they can sell them by the end of the summer. The challengers, I have no idea how they're, how, how, how they're going to. Would you would uh, comment out there? Would you guys buy a year old car? I, and they still charge you sticker. Would you still buy a year old car? Just curious. Okay, so that's my thoughts on uh, the uh, <laughs> the train wreck that is happening over there at Stellantis. It, it 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 is unreal. They are as bad as I thought they were in my previous videos talking about how they just don't understand this market and they really don't. So, you know, I want to hear from you guys uh, comment on this because uh, it's just fascinating. Actually, we're living in such a bizarre time. You know, if you got anything from this, Hey, just like it. And of course, Hey, subscribe because I also do stuff on older cars. I actually just drove across the United States in a 29 year old BMW. So with that, you know, I'm going to try to do these, uh, every every two weeks or so because i also want to do uh, address the collectability of these new cars <laughs> and uh you know just kind of mix things up a bit so with that uh if you have a classic car or something cool to drive take it out because you make someone's day including your own and i'll catch you down the road